I am super excited to share with you a system that I use to help maintain my sanity. From all the multiple hats that I wear, from stay-at-home mom to a wife, to teaching, to working, to then doing ministry, there is a number of things that can get me easily overwhelmed. And I wanna share with you what I do to prioritize and get my life going day by day. Come on and check out this video. I was once guilty of coveting the Superwoman Award. I'm just not that girl anymore. What changed? A radical experience where everything that I was doing and being and accomplishing and taking on became more of a load than it did a place for freedom. And when you get to a place where you realize that everything is urgent, there's the tyranny of the urgent, everybody calling, everybody wanting, you trying to be and do and have uh, and succeed at everything, but then the important is left out, the time with your children, being present, being in the moment, recognizing the joy and the beauty of life, being able to see yourself operating uh, with all of the fruits of the spirit, those things were being put to the wayside. So now I'm in a place where I'm just adamant completely adamant about maintaining my fruit. That's my joy, my love, peace, gentleness, the ability to wait in patience in the right way, having meekness, all of those fruits, self-control, um, gentleness, kindness, all of the things that I want to impart in my children in order to leave a legacy beyond just the doing. Uh, I'm committed to maintaining that and protecting it so much so that I've now set up my life so that I can see those things happening daily. So at the end of the day, when I lay down to sleep, I can say I kept joy. I maintained peace. I was able to give out love so that when the things happen in life, the storms of life that will indeed happen to us all, that I know that I have taken care of what was priority, what was important to me, and that those things don't become the uh, unraveling where I can't come back. I can't recover because I've set things in motion that have been building up to maintain the fruit. So I hope that makes sense. It may be a little abstract, but in a nutshell, it's about prioritizing my life in such a way that to be able to give out from a place of not being depleted, but filled every day but not carrying those weights in such a way that I'm trying to be all things for everybody. And the way that I have been able to maintain that is a system that I did not create, but I have uh, uh, embraced. And it is through the time block schedule. And the time block schedule essentially says that you block out times in your day to dedicate to a particular purpose, a particular time. So I want to be able to share that with you in hopes that it is helpful to you uh, and that in some way you can see benefit in it. Now, my time block system is only used for three days out of the week. And that is really because those are the three days that are really dedicated it's a specific system or structure. The other days are more flexible days. And so you'll see when I talk about it that it doesn't lend itself to maybe the same schedule. Um, so this time block system, by the way, can be used if you're a working mom. It can be used if you're a parent in general or if you're just a person that is a business owner and you want to structure your time in a certain way. So it's just basically a way to block your time. And what you do is for each block, you categorize it. So if you can see my first time block is called the self-care block because I can't give out anything that I'm not putting in so one of the first things that I do in the morning, and I am the furthest from being a morning person, but I have to tell you that when I didn't use this time block for this particular purpose, I found myself unraveling easily. I found my peace being tempered and me just not being able to just uh, have a sense of uh, in my day. And so then I'm easily agitated and I'm not able to attend to the important things that matter. From 5.30 to 8.30, I dedicate to self-care. So that starts from the very moment I wake up and get out of the bed, making my bed, going into my prayer closet, having prayer, having Bible study time, journaling. I love to journal. I love to write my thoughts. I've been doing it since I was a little girl. That had been put to the side. So now I journal. Seven minute stretch. Don't judge me. I'm, I'm a work in progress, but I feel like I'm feeling a little better just from stretching for seven minutes. Those of you that's in the gym, got those memberships, muscle bound down, put his face in the sand type folk. I applaud you. I'm just not there yet. So I do a seven minute stretch. I eat breakfast. Whew, I eat breakfast. 
not a morning breakfast person. I can really do without breakfast foods. But again, I know that I have to have the energy and what I need put in me. I could easily go the whole day and never eat anything until like dinner time. Those days are over. So even if it's a smoothie, something like putting something in my stomach, I write down that I need to take my vitamins because that's just not something that I would naturally do. So I have to put it down so that I do it. Um, and then getting dressed, being able to have to say that I got myself dressed and I didn't wait to the end of the day just to take a shower because when you got kids, that's how it be. All right. So that is my self-care block. Now, when the 530 to 830 time, let's say I sleep through some of that time. I'm not going to guilt myself into saying I didn't get everything done in that hour. That block is for self-care. So whatever time I end up waking up, if it's within that block, I'm going to do something of priority and importance in that block to get my, my day jump started. So once that time is over, I set my phone to sound the alarm at 830, actually 10 minutes before to give myself a heads up this time and this block is getting ready to end. And then I set a time for the time itself, 830, so that I'm able to then shift into the next thing. It used to be that I felt like I had to work at something until I completed it. Listen, we could spend the whole time doing something and doing it well. And then we look at the end of the day and say, what have we really accomplished? Did I really do the things that were of importance? So for me, I'm shifting my mindset to say, I got some things done. It may not be everything that was on that to-do list in the beginning because I'm that to-do list girl. I got to check it all off. But at least I dedicated time to this thing. So from shifting to block two, it's my homeschool block. So this is the time that is strictly dedicated to my children and the time that I'm spending to them with them because it's important for me to see their growth, not just in learning, but in being with them. To be a stay-at-home mom, I can remember being a stay-at-home mom and I was working um, online being a graduate professor and I was dedicating all of my time to grading papers, meeting deadlines, discussion boards, and they were looking at me like, what about us? So you can be present with your children and not be present. So I was physically there, but I wasn't giving them the attention. So this homeschool block is strictly for that time with my children. So it goes from 8.30 to 12.30. I wake up the kids. Typically, they're already up in prayer sometimes with me. But nonetheless, I wake them up. They have a morning routine where they make their best. They get themselves dressed. And while they're doing that, I'm actually preparing their breakfast. So then they come down. Their breakfast is on the table. We're able to talk to each other for just a little bit while they eat their breakfast. Then I prep the classroom because their, their homeschool room serves as their playroom. And I find that when I prep the classroom the day before, it doesn't look anything like what I prep. So I spend time prepping the classroom, just getting things written on the board. And then we do our morning circle time. You can check that out in a previous video if you have not seen what we do for morning circle. And then my children go ahead and start their homeschool day, which is our workbox system. And that's another video where I go through bins one through five and you can see my children using the workbox system. So they clean. We have a cleaning routine for our school. And then I just reset or replenish the supplies that were used. And that block ends at 1230. Once again, set that 10 minute alarm and then set the alarm for the time that it's going to end. Block number three is my quiet time. I named that quiet time because it is the downtime that both my children need and I'm able to get some things accomplished during that time. So during the quiet time, it's 1230 to three o'clock. I still have little ones that nap, but I have a daughter that's getting a little bit older and so she may not nap, but she still has downtime where she gets some independent time to herself, which is so important to her because she spends a lot of time dedicated to her sister and her brother who really like like her attention, but this gives her time to do something quietly by herself while her, while her siblings are napping. During that time, if I need a nap, I take it and I don't feel guilty about it. But most times I am, while they're doing that, cycling laundry loads, washing the dishes from the breakfast, um, getting uh, purging my mail, purging the mail, something I got to put on the list because that mail will add up. So going through the mail, any appointments that I have or meetings, I'm scheduling them. I'm paying bills because we got to be able to stay in this house, pay your bills. Um, and then I'm prepping dinner, which whatever that may be, um, if it's something I need to pull out of the fridge or if it's something I throw in a crock pot, whatever it is, I prep the dinner. So again, that's 1230 to three. And then that time is up. 
The fourth block is called Mom Work Child's Play. And this is the time when my kids get their physical activity. They are in recreational classes. So they're able to do things that allow them to be with other kids, allow them to get that time out, that physical activity, things that they need to be healthy, wealthy, and strong. Um, and so they get that time while mama is doing her work because it's important to me to dedicate to not just working, but leaving a legacy and doing things to build my brand, to build the business, and to build the things that are important to me. So during that block, I'm able to respond to emails. I'm responding to business inquiries. I'm able to do email and file creation. I'm editing videos. And I'm preparing for CC, which is um, I'm one of the tutors where I actually work with other children. So I have to prepare for those things. So that happens during that 3 to 630 block. The fifth block is called an off to bed. I used to read my children this bedtime story by Daniel Tiger, which was a song in it that said bath time PJs, brush teeth, story and song and off to bed. And they love that story. So it's what I block as an off to bed. It's prepping for the downtime of getting them to bed. And during the 630 to nine o'clock hour, they are having their dinner. They're getting bathed or showered. I'm brushing their teeth. We have a family bonding time. It may be their whole family with their dad and where we sit down and we do a game. We're having a moment with them. It can be an activity. Sometimes they just run around the house on their dad's back. It works for them. But family bonding time, we do a story time and a devotional time with them. And then the kids get ready for bed. I also take that time to clean the kitchen because I don't want to wake up to a whole bunch of dishes. RRR, uh, relax, relate, release. Mm -hmm. That's my 9 o'clock to 11.30 hour. Now, I'm typically a night person, so I can easily stay up well through the night trying to get things done. But I take a breather three times a week and I say, this is it. I just sit down, have a moment with my husband. I go to my to-do list first and look at anything for the next day that may be coming up so that I know in my mind what's to come. And then I have the 12.25 time. It's called 12.25 our time. It is believed that women talk about 1200 words i mean men 1200 words use about 1200 words a day and women 2500 so me and my husband have this running joke that um we're going to get our time out and this is our time of just talking debriefing about our day discussing anything that may be relevant time of bonding and connecting critical to marriage critical to marriage so it deserves a block and um, of course we got to sleep again if it doesn't all happen in this blocking that I have made up um, for myself I'm the one that put it there so whatever you put there those are the things that you're saying are important and so if it doesn't all happen you're not going around with your hair pulled out because you realize you did accomplish things that were important to you and that is what matters so again I do this three times a week and I'm really excited about using it because I have found that the distractions that usually take place like I said the phone bleeping every time you got an email every time you got a phone call every time you got a message every time you got a bing every time you got anything that those are things that take away from the prioritizing of what is meaningful at least for me in my life and I'm finding that by these blocks it keeps me at a place of saying there is a time for that I will have time to look at that I will have a time to address that but it's not now and so it's allowed me to feel like I'm getting more important things done rather than urgent things. Everything's a big thing. Everything's a matter. And so again, I have not taken this through my whole week yet. I'm still trying to work out the other days because we have flexible days. The other days, that's when we do appointments. We go out and I try to schedule everything that's happening outside, like our grocery shopping. Things like that are a little bit more difficult to put on a block because I got kids. I got kids. So they shift your block just from a poopy diaper. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying. And if you don't, God bless you. Uh, but yeah, so these three days, at least I know, and they know the schedule that we're on. So let me know what you think about the block schedule system and if it's something that you would use uh, or have used or if there's some other way. Now, I print mine out and you saw on the screen some of the, the ways that it works, but I type mine up in a simple Excel spreadsheet. You can feel free to do yours however you deem fit. Um, there are so many apps, Trello, Google Calendar. You make yours the way you want, but if you're interested in a free printable feel free to download the one that i've left in the description box below it is color coded you can fill it in through your excel spreadsheet the way that you want i started out with mine being just literally a a um a sheet of paper written down so here's someone that needs to write it down you write it down 
hopefully you like this video if you do like share subscribe continue to follow us I hope that you found something that you can put to use and hopefully that you get to the place of in making what's important important and putting aside the things that appear to be urgent and saying that I am going to live my life and be fulfilled in the things that I put as priority have a blessed 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 day goodbye <laughs>